Okay, so I've got some glass from an old pickle jar. It's a pretty large jar. I guess it's a gallon or something. Anyway, here's parts of the bottom. Pretty thick. The sides. The sides are not so thick, but the closer you get to the bottom of the jar, the thicker the glass gets. So some of this is not too bad. Right, I think I might be able to manage to get a point out of the side. I think from the straight part, this is near the bottom. I think. Yeah. So from the straight areas, I might be able to get a point out of that before it starts to change contour. So that's not very tall. Let's see. But, you know, I could get a point out of these various pieces. But I'm going to try napping the bottom, which is the most common the most common uh, part of the of the jar for nappers to to use, okay? And I will be trying to do an easy point, easy style, uh, grizzly bear's hiding place type point. Now I will be using Abo tools for this out of um, request um, from popular demand, or due to popular demand, or however you say it. Uh, because uh, everyone is having trouble with glass snapping with Abel tools, I guess. The hardest part about napping with Abel tools is the notching. For me. I don't know if it's the same for you guys. So... I'll be narrating the notching and not much else. It'll take me a while to get to the notching, so this, this first 30 minutes probably is going to be just developing the preform. The notching will be in the next 30 minutes, so you may want to skip ahead. Okay, so... Um, what else? Oh yeah, I was doing a little bit of research before this video into Ishii's tools, and he did use iron, okay? He used iron pressure flakers. Now he was born in 1861. Now that's an easy date for me to remember because that's the beginning of the Civil War. So he was born at the beginning of the Civil War, which means he had access to iron his whole life. So he probably grew up napping with iron pointed pressure flakers and didn't use antler for his pressure flakers. But I'm going to try anyway, or I'm going to do a video with it anyway. Now there's a weird crack in here. Hopefully that's not going to be an issue. Theoretically, I have plenty of room. Okay. So, uh, although I do think Ishii was able to nap with Abo tools, like I think in one place that I read, he was using a bone pressure flaker. Or maybe it was a bone drill. Anyway. I'm going to just satisfy the demand for the ABO video and say it's possible that Ishii used ABO tools before he entered society. It's possible. Okay. So I'll nap this with 
uh, mainly elk antler tipped tools. And I'll humor those guys who don't want to see indirect percussion. I won't use much of it. Even though it's the greatest technique in the world. <laughs> Not kidding. I won't be doing much indirect percussion on this. Okay. If at all. I don't think I'll do any. And I'm not going to use any steel either. Or iron. Okay. And uh, his tools are curiously missing the actual Ishi stick. There's one reference, one set of, or one photograph that has a, a Ishi type stick used by another tribe in that area of Northern California. There's a stick with a, uh, the antler mounted on the side here, or a bone, a sliver of bone, and then wrapped with buckskin or rawhide. Okay, so, but I'll be using this type here, drilled out, and I believe this is elk antler here. Although, although it could be a cow bone. I think I've mentioned that before. I'm not sure what that is. But if it's cow bone, it's bleached white cow bone. If it's antler, it's elk antler. So it's one of those two. And I'll be using it to rough this out. Now the, the funny thing is the stick that Ishii is known for or the stick that's named after Ishii may not have been used by Ishii himself which is an interesting twist in the story I think I have a piece of glass from yesterday in my, my hand there hold on yeah Sneaky little piece of glass in my skin from yesterday. Okay. Anyway. It could be that Ishii didn't use the type of sticks that are known to be used in that area. And also in the Pueblo region of the southwest. He may never have used one and just use his iron tip pressure flakers and hammer stones and maybe a billet of some sort. He did have a vertical punch, but uh, probably no horizontal punches. So that was interesting. I had forgotten about that. Anyway, some of you guys are Ishii experts, so you'll know if that's been debunked or if it's still a controversy, whether Ishii actually used the Ishii stick. Okay. I'm mainly interested in his archery tackle and not his flint napping tools. So that's why I didn't know much about that. That's why I was kind of surprised. Anyway. There are some records of actual uh, foot napping pressure flaking sticks that I could make some reproductions of for future videos. But those will be on my Allergic Hobbit channel. I'm doing an ABO video on this channel because of popular demand. Normally I would do all my ABO stuff from now on on the Allergic Hobbit channel.
it's also a good change. I mean, it gets a little bit boring doing the same thing over and over. But there's a learning curve going from steel to antler or from iron to antler. There are differences, of course. One of the main differences is the ability of the antler or bone to grab the edge. It doesn't slip. So that means, means a couple of things. One, uh, as you can see, I'm not abrading. It doesn't crush the edge as much, even if it's rather sharp. It's a little bit gentler on the edge of the workpiece. It still does crush, don't get me wrong. Sometimes unknowingly so. And it still does slip. Yeah, I think this is antler because it's not slipping as much as I think bone would be slipping right now. Anyway, the difference is less crushing, easier to grab onto the edge and press off a flake. But also the range of the flakes, they travel well when you're actually trying to get flakes to travel, right? Much easier to get flakes to travel when you want them to travel. Let's see. Uh, maybe a third thing would be you got to keep changing the diameter of the tool tip with the antler. As your workpiece gets smaller, the tool tips need to get smaller. But you can only get so small with antler before it starts to break, right? So there's a dance there. There's a, there's a balance you have to maintain, whereas with metals, a metal tool tip is highly versatile. You can push off big flakes or small flakes with a relatively sharp tip. With antler, since it's weak when it's sharp, you can't push off big flakes normally. I suppose if you drive in exactly vertical, you can push off some big flakes, but if you're just doing the side, side pressure technique, not pushing directly inward it's going to be hard to generate long flakes and big flakes with a, a sharp tip but you can do it easily with metal now from the accounts that I read about Ishii he did all of, you know 90% of his flint napping with the pressure flaker which makes sense for these little points. But he started out with a relatively thick, a relatively thick spall, right? If I remember correctly. And some of his points were like a quarter inch thick. So they weren't all that delicate. But anyway, uh, you would have to generate some good amount of strength to get good pressure flakes on thick material. But it's not too bad. It's about the same as with metal. Same amount of force. You know, I get tired just the same. It's not any easier with antler. Although they, they do run well. Flakes do run pretty well. I'm going to try to take my time with this. I am kind of in a hurry, but I'm going to try to take my time. I'm 
also hopped up on caffeine right now. So I don't fall asleep during this process. Usually pressure flaking is very, very tedious and boring for me. But I'm getting used to it. I can tolerate a lo tolerate it a lot more nowadays than I could a few years ago. I got a question about why I don't run flakes across the surface right away. Why do I wait to? remove the original surface uh, well my typical answer is I usually wait till it gets narrow that way I don't have to work I don't have to work as hard to send flakes across and the other reason is sometimes I don't really care that um, that the original surface of the flake or surface of the bottle sh is showing on the point. It used to drive me nuts. I hated to see the original surface of the bottle. But it's a bottle, it's glass, I mean it's modern. Um, oops, a little bit over an overshot. So I mean it, it shouldn't bother me, it's, it's a modern material. So it does I don't really pay attention to that as much as I used to. I don't really care too much if I see the original surface. The hard part about this is since it's so thick, is thinning it down without ruining it. Now, could it be, could I be doing a better job if I had, if I had an abrader and abrade the edges? That's an interesting question. I can abrade with the tip of the flaker and that's usually sufficient to strengthen the edge. But I don't really know if it would be easier to run good flakes or thinning flakes if I had an abrader. Before I was using one, if I was using one right now. I have an abrader, I'm just not using it. Ah, so I need a little bit of a smaller tip for these smaller areas. Let's see. I have another pressure flicker here. Okay, here it is. With a smaller tip. So yeah, I don't know. If I had an abrader, would it be better for running flakes overall? Could be. Although you kind of do need a sharp edge with with antler. If you braid it too much, you can't push off flakes. The antler just doesn't grab in that way. Uh, there's more friction with metal against the glass. So... Um, See, does that make sense? Uh, no, there's less friction. You need, you need to abrade with metal. There's, there's less friction with metal. 
so you do need to abrade the antler doesn't slip as much it'll grab the edge hope that made sense so if I was abrading I would probably actually be making it just too difficult for the antler to grab onto it would be too smooth or too rounded I should say but using it using the abrader will roughen up the surface so the surface will not be smooth so it would help in that way but if, if the edge is rounded it prevents the antler from gripping One thing that annoys me is when I try to push off a flake and it comes off too easily and it doesn't go anywhere. All right, so I'm getting to the point where I'm running out of room and I got to thin this down a lot. I need a lot of edge to thin down a lot of thickness, so I'm getting pretty narrow. Kind of risky. Let's see. Okay. But I'll try to take my time. And I know sandpaper is not abo. Oh well. Saves time. I could do it on this sandstone, but it takes forever. And good quality sandstone is not easy to find. You know, this stuff, I mean, there's, there's lots of it in the world, but for some reason I can't find much of it. Not up good quality anyway for flint napping. It's either too crumbly or too hard. It's, hard. it's difficult to get it just right, just right in the middle. I don't know if I mentioned this, but it's hard to see the edge with clear glass. It's really hard to, to know if I'm scratching it enough or dulling it enough until I actually take a flake off. I don't want to be napping in the wrong direction here. Sometimes I lose track of where I should be thinning. That piece hit me in the forehead. I do have a face shield, but it's cheap, cheap floppy plastic, and it ruins my depth perception. It just feels really wonky when I'm using a full face shield. Like I'm napping underwater or something. I had a question about that, too. What happens if you nap underwater? You guys have quite an imagination. Everything would be different, I imagine, because water dampens all these forces. 
at least a little bit. No, I'm I'm reaching for an abrader and I'm saying um I'm not supposed to be using them. So yeah, I got a mix of techniques going here. Ishii did not abrade, but he probably did not use antler tipped tools for most of his stuff. But I am using an antler tip tool. So it's not completely the same. I don't like abrading anyway, so no big deal. I used to lose track of what I was doing when I was abrading back in the day. I would stop right in the middle of a series of flakes or a tough spot. And I had to go back in a braid again and I would lose track of what I was doing. Because when you're not used to a braiding, a braiding is an art in itself sometimes. You can do a lot with an abrader. You can knock off flakes with an abrader. You don't have to just grind the edge. You can use it like a hammerstone. That sort of thing. Sometimes the abraders that you're using is just not good for the material you have, so you have to look around for a different one. If you're doing abo style stuff, you know, modern abraders will abrade anything, but with abo style stuff, some rocks just won't abrade certain rocks. Certain flints are very resistant to abrasion. So you're messing with that and you finally figure out figure out what'll work and you get back to flaking and you forget which, where you were or what you were trying to do. Or forget something that, oh, I just learned this particular angle. What was that angle again or whatever? It's not all about angles. A lot of it is about... Uh, a lot of it was about force. And how you're applying it. Because the, the angle will change a lot. You can get away with a lot. As far as the angles go, it doesn't. They don't need to be perfect, but the forces they need to be per, almost perfect. You know what I mean? You have to really get the feel for how much force you you, you can use. And with abo tools, they get duller as you progress, right? But you need tools that get sharper and sharper as you progress because you need to be working with smaller platforms, smaller edges, smaller everything, smaller flakes. So the tools need to be get, need to be getting sharper and sharper, not duller and duller. That's the challenge, one of the challenges with abo tools. The same with metal, but metal does not need to be dressed or f or fixed as often as the antler tools that get worn down easily. Metal tools last longer, so they you can start with a pointy tool and then get through most of your flake, most of your flaking, and still have a a pointy tool for the finish up. Not, not the same, not so much with antler.
Okay, I'll continue in the next video.